Better to be a big fish in a small pond than a small fish in a big pond. Such was the parental advice given to a young Paul Elliott when he was a high school senior considering colleges. A native of Nashville and member of a Presbyterian church, Paul knew of Maryville College and had visited. Seeing the practically brand new Wilson Chapel in theater, his mind was made up. He would enroll at Maryville and major in theater. Since the age of six, Paul had wanted to be an actor after an introduction to community theater. At Maryville, he came to love and respect theater and speech arts professors Kathleen Craven and E. Parker Dupler. Their mentorship, their commitment to expose students to various styles of theater, and their expectation of perfection from cast members made a big impression on young Paul. But sadly, Maryville College ended the theater major in his senior year, and Paul returned to Nashville, enrolling at George Peabody College. He earned a bachelor's degree in special education and went to work. But Paul missed the theater, so when he heard that the University of North Carolina Greensboro was beginning an MFA program and opening it up to men, he and wife Janya moved east. He earned his master's degree in 1968 and accepted a position as head of the theater department at Stratford College in Danville, Virginia. He directed and wrote plays, and within a few years was made chairman of Stratford's performing arts department. But he wouldn't spend his career there. He wrote, One day as I was lecturing to my students, I realized I was sending those students out to get jobs in an industry I had never experienced myself. After much discussion with my wife, I took a year sabbatical to find out exactly what it was like out there, and never went back. Trading the small pond for a bigger pond, he left Danville for Nashville, where he began writing screenplays. When actor Monty Markham visited Music City and mentioned a meeting with the Nashville screenwriter Paul Elliott, this alumnus's career took a different turn and took off. Joining Showbiz Inc. as a talent and script coordinator in Nashville, he wrote and produced several country and western TV shows, including Dolly, Pop Goes the Country, Marty Robbins Spotlight, and Nashville on the Road. And he worked with stars such as Carol Channing, Ruth Buzzy, Rod McEwen, and The Fifth Dimension. In the mid-1970s, he moved to Utah and added to his resume the Donnie and Marie Osmond show. When the show was moved to Los Angeles, Paul and his family, which by then included daughters Keats and Kirsten, moved too. And Paul realized he was swimming in the biggest pond of them all. Work with big production shows led to opportunities to write, produce, and direct live entertainment spectaculars for theme parks like Disneyland, Disney World, and Sanrio Pura Land in Japan. And work with Disney led to a position with Creative Meeting Services, an event planning company that specializes in multi-million dollar press launches for Fortune 500 companies like Hewlett Packard, Microsoft, and Neutrogena. For more than a decade, Paul did all the directing and producing at CMS. When he retired in 2007, Paul returned to writing at the urging of his husband, Ed Joswick, and this next act of his life has been successful as well. Consider, four new plays published, including the award-winning comedy Exit Laughing, three world premieres, his play Doola, about Civil War figure Tom Doola turned into a musical and performed by Northwestern University, two novels completed, one, The Riverton Project, is due in bookstores later this fall and is slated for a Warner Brothers series. And paying forward what he learned from Kathleen Craven and E. Parker Dupler, Paul mentors young playwrights as the leader of Fierce Backbone Writers Unit in Hollywood, and he teaches improv workshops for senior citizens. Back at Maryville, he has volunteered his time as a consultant on the programming of the Clayton Center for the Arts. Today, Paul and Ed live in Los Angeles, where actors, directors, producers, and others in the industry are among their community of friends. They travel and enjoy visits with family members especially Paul's two daughters and two grandchildren. Paul Elliott probably doesn't think of his life in terms of ponds and fish anymore, but he undoubtedly became a big fish in a big pond during his career. And he keeps on swimming. For all he has accomplished, he is a deserving winner of the alumni citation. Congratulations, Paul.